Another point, I'm Richard Fields. On the program tonight, we have Tim Husudinov, and we have John Cameron, as well as Doug Barbieri. Barbieri, Barbieri. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, the Federal Drug Administration claims that Kratom is, a, is an opioid which can lead to a fatal overdose. In the meantime, the National Institute for Drug Abuse and other federal agency uh, says that, well, that doesn't happen unless it's mixed with other drugs. Uh, until, they, until they had a little parley with the FDA, in which case, uh, at which point they took that particular piece of information off their website. Let's talk about Kratom. Is that the new, uh, the new uh, Oxycontin? No. no what is it? Go, you want me to go? Well, it's, it's not an opioid. Uh, it has I heard that it is, actually. No. It has similar similarities. It, ha it has, it has uh, um, similar effects to an opioid, but it is not an <coughs> opioid. It is not part of that part of that family. Okay. And, and uh, Kratom or Kratom? Kratom. Kratom is weird because uh, when, you, when you take Kratom at, at lower doses, it's, it's more like um, an energizing drug. It's more like Coke, even though Coke has, has um, pain-killing effects. Um, it's not until you take a little bit higher dose that you get uh, effects that are similar to opioids, which is um, you know, the, the depressant part and the, the very the makes you sleepy and the, it's the strong pain killing effects kick in. Um, is it um, physically addictive? I don't know if there's enough information on it out there, but uh, it has never yeah, the National Institute on Drug Abuse might have taken the the information off their website, but what they did was actually clarify the position um, that agreed with some very good science before and said that um, you know let's be clear. <coughs> that it's, uh, it has opioid-like effects, but is not an opioid. They, they spelled that out in, in their position paper, maybe not on their website. And they said that there, there are no, uh, because the, the anti-drug crowd or the pro-gangster, pro-lots of cops and prison guards crowd, of course wants it to be um, classified as, a, as a, the same drug schedule as Schedule as One, the DEA was trying yeah. to propose a few, a few months ago. To well, make but it they, schedule they've one still got pot schedule as a schedule, well, yeah, one, right? right? I and think it was last year that they tried to do that, and that proposal was defeated. It was yeah. defeated because there's a whole lot of uh, uproar among kratom users who right. said, "No, no, no! This is the, this is the you know the thing that keeps me off opioids and keeps mm -hmm. my pain at bay and mm -hmm. does all kinds of other uh, interesting things." No, that, there, I don't think there's there's enough research on there about addiction, but you know, you have people who are addicted to Facebook. So, I mean, um, it, it, whether it's the drug itself that is physically addictive or the mental state created by the drug, um, you know, they say that uh, caffeine isn't physically addictive, but I know mm. every time I've ever tried to stop drinking <laughs> coffee, the headache uh, it happened know, within quick. one day. One yeah, day, yeah. and you know, supposedly, and interestingly if, if enough, you fight through it. Interestingly enough, the drug kratom, the the, the uh, tree or the leaf that it comes mm -hmm. from, which comes from Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. is related to coffee. Mm -hmm. It's in the same family as as, as coffee trees. Now that's mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So well, you know, it, you you read ninety three percent of my book, and in it, when a person in the Philippines uses. Uh, leaves from the kratom tree to treat pain. Oh, okay. And so um, I, I didn't remember that. that I, no, I didn't remember that part. You didn't remember that part. Well, there's a lot in the book. It was, a, it was a long book, John. Except for the ending. Yeah. 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 All right. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, they might be caving on what they're putting on their website, but their position paper actually more clearly spelled out the good research is out there and said that no, it's not an opioid, it has opioid like effects. But the, the real killer, no pun intended, is that the, the crazies um, at the FDA are quoting uh, 42 kratom-related deaths, and in none of those was uh, overdose deaths, and none of those was it kratom on its own. As a matter of fact, the position paper uh, on the National Institute of Drug Abuse again clearly spells out. It did. That they took it off the website. But under under pr paper. under under pr well, they took it all off the website under pressure from the yeah. FDA. But their posted position paper clearly Originally, yes. spells out. Um, well, yeah, but you know, you talk about websites and 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 uh, editing of websites. I mean, if you punch in Hillary Clinton L I in Google, you get library. 
instead of liar. So, I mean, you know, if we're going to worry about uh, the truth the, uh, in, in websites, the point is that, we, we have we have past. a we have a drug here that is a, it's an anti-inflammatory. Yeah. It's a, an, an anti-malarial. It's a, a painkiller. Yeah. It's, it's a, also a stimulant. It's a stimulant. Doses. It's a, a sexual stimulant. It's you know well, half, a dozen, half a dozen. Yeah. Different, half a dozen different. You need it. Half a dozen different things. How? If I had feelings, <laughs> they'd be <hurt>. half a dozen <laughs> different things. And why would the the FDA not be saying, hey? Let's add this to the pharmacopoeia in the United States. It's got a, it's this, this thing does a lot of good. Be lot because of the stuff. FDA is or a alternatively, art. if they want to be a little bit more cautious, why would they not say, let's double blind test this uh, this natural remedy to see if it does all the things that the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, people who are testifying on its behalf say it does. Let's 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 find out. Find out if there's any science to it. Are you instead is that a serious why question? Instead, the what they did was they said, okay. They put together this 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 uh, chemical ana uh, analyzing uh, program called Phase, which stands for something I forget. But it basically does a chemical analysis of what the molecular structure of the of the uh, plant is, and they said, oh, it has a, a whole lot of, of similarities to opioids. So it's an opioid. So well, we already have opioids that are you know that are tested and cleared and have <coughs> our seal of approval. We don't need any more damn opioids. So we're going to prevent it from being imported, which means that since it only grows in Southeast Asia and maybe Africa, and you can't, you can't, it you can't, greenhouses. Well, greenhouses, but you know, probably not as, not, not the, with the same, with the same characteristics. But the point is, you can't get a good, uh, honest supply of kratom anymore because it's been banned from import. So you can't do the testing. It's not illegal, but you can't really get the pure product because the FDA has thrown up all kinds of roadblocks to make that impossible. Do you know who are why? they protecting? Do you know why? Drug who are they protecting? Yes. Okay, because they're, a, they're a political or organization. Cops. <laughs> yeah. That's what they are. Prison yeah. guards. Well, yeah. number one, yeah. the manufacturer of Oxycontin and its and all of the rest yeah. of the opioids. Oxy. What? Number two, <laughs> the uh, the money uh, the, uh, the, the, the you know the criminal justice police union <laughs> penitentiary <laughs> that lobby who would like to have everything illegal to keep themselves in business. Hey, I'm sorry, I got off my. Yes, you did. Soapbox, but that's but, okay. But that's that's the whole point of us being libertarians. Doug, know? you get on your soapbox on this one. South okay. Africa, right. President Cyril Ramaphosa, I think I said that right, has yeah. proposed a constitutional amendment. If it's a constitutional amendment, that makes it legal, don't you know? But the yeah. constitutional amendment would make it possible for South Africa to confiscate the land owned by all the Boers, the white folks in uh, South Africa, without compensation, of course. Who these are people who have owned it for uh, probably hundreds of years, certainly Since generations. Sixteen hundred. And uh, and that's okay because the, the you know their their ancestors originally stole it from the from the uh, sure. from the, the from the black Africans. Actually, they originally stole it from nobody because it was basic. Much of South Africa was was not populated at all. No, there are, there were so some, just came in and settled it. Fights. They came yeah. in and settled it. But anyway, Doug, I think is going to. Oh, you yeah. guys probably more knowledgeable than me, but uh, well, I'll just say that uh, it, it's it strikes me funny because uh, I actually had a Facebook friend of mine who insisted that racism is a white phenomenon, and it, it it's not something that can be done by other races. Even you know, even in the light, even even in, in light of facts like this. But this is this is racism. <laughs> you know, they want to take it back because they're white. And that's what it really comes down to, and so uh, uh, it, it's. And they're they're really they're really worried about you know the violence that that is going to come from this. Um, and uh, you know they it would be better to just let the landowners be, <laughs> and do their own thing. Uh, well, I mean, you can make an argument. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can make an argument that we stole the land from the Indians and we get it back. Yeah, yeah but who are you going to give it back to? But who are you going to give it back to? I mean, they're all dead. It's like you can't yeah. even you can't even make the argument that well the descendants deserve it. Why? Yeah. You know, it's like, look, what you, just, what you should do is just say, all right, here's the way that things are now. Let's just have a free market and everything. Yeah. And, of course, that's not what's happening. And, of course, yeah. when that's done, everybody suffers. And the, and the, the role model is Rhodesia, Rhodesia, which is now Zimbabwe. Uh, they gave away or they took, uh, they expropriated all of the land, all of the white-owned uh, land and took uh, a, a country which was the breadbasket of Africa. Highest standard highly, of living, highly, highly, highest standard standard living, living in Africa. For blacks as highest, well as whites. Highest uh, rate of literacy in Africa, longest average lifespan, uh, strongest economy, 
And within a very few years, you had um, turned it, uh, turn it into a basket case. Basket, basket, uh, and case, a food importer. Food importer. Uh -huh. uh, people were were the that it came apart so quickly. It was insane. Uh, and and why people can't see the simple lesson of socialism not working when they have another country in Africa that is a, a, a mirrored model of South Africa, maybe even it was stronger and better run and more vibrant economy and all the rest of that. And uh, I know someone whose um, grandfather actually had a heart attack um, very shortly after being forcefully removed from his land. He was one of the first farmers removed from his land in Rhodesia. And, and within like hours of being dragged from his house and forced off the land that his family had literally worked in in Rhodesia for like, I don't know, 12 generations, died of a heart attack. Yeah. So, but you know, there, there was one good thing that happened with Zimbabwe. It made me richer than Bill Gates, Warren Buffett, and, uh, and uh, uh, Jeff Bezos combined. Mm -hmm. I am a quadrillionaire. Mm -hmm. I have on my refrigerator a 100 quadrillion yeah. dollar note from Zimbabwe. Yeah, it's really awesome. <laughs> so some I'll of the buy that from you for a <laughs> some, some of the other issues uh, implicated in, in what's happening in South Africa, I mean, it's, it, part of it is a tyranny of the majority. Uh, the white population is about, what, l around 9% total? Yes, it, they are the minority. Um, yeah. they're, the they boars? have already sent yeah. um, uh, a group of envoys, we'll call yeah. them, to places like Russia, uh, the breadbasket areas of, uh, of Russia, and are making deals uh, to resettle up oh. to 30 families of the Boers uh, of, of South Africa and to, for them to bring their own cattle because they're generally afraid for their lives. Additionally, just some basic uh, cursory uh, Google searches will show a lot of uh, instances of violence and hatred coming from the majority in, in South Africa, wearing shirts uh, in black with red lettering saying, land or death. So the, the concern of the farmers that are going to have their land probably taken from them by force is very real. Mm, um, and if they're going to consider going to places like Russia that I'm familiar with may not be the best place to resettle. <laughs> um, but in, in co comparison to what's, what could happen to them there is looking like the best case scenario. So that's, that's something very frightful indeed when in, uh, looking into this issue as well as a campaign promise to the new president. So. Well, and he he made he said, oh no no, no don't worry, we're not going to allow violence, and we'll sit down and talk. Like oh yeah, we're going to take it. We're going to steal it from you peacefully. Yeah, don't fight yeah. That. No, no, so but it won't be by, yeah, done by violence. Worry about, don't worry about. There'll violence. only be a law You're against safe. it. We're going to sit down and have reasonable conversations. It's a reasonable. Yeah, things. I have a reasonable <laughs> proposition. Give it to me, or I will or, put you in jail. Yeah, sure, that's or reasonable we'll shoot to you me. In, yeah. in the night and no, and bury your body. Yeah. And yeah. Find out. <laughs> but it's not violent. The United States and the Iranian war drums are beating once again. This time, well, again, over the Strait of Hormuz, uh, the Iranians are, have these things that they call, what do they call them, bullet boats or speed boats, uh, buzz boats, I forget the, the exact terminology. Targets, we call them targets. They're small boats that move around uh, and uh, are actually quite uh, adept at taking out large boats mm -hmm. because uh, they move so fast and so quickly and they are small targets. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the uh, you know we've we've been hearing uh, war drums uh, and warlike speech coming from Trump. Now we're hearing it coming from the Ayatollahs and the uh, Ramallahs and whatever the names of the people are in Iran. Mullahs. Mullahs. Uh, is Fathers, there a Mullahs. pony that the United States has at all in keeping the Strait of Hormuz open, uh, or keeping or not keeping the government of Iran intact? Is the, well, the first part of the question I did not hear, Richard. Sorry. Do we have an interest in, in what's going on in Iran or with Iran and its neighbors? Well, we, we obviously think we do. Um, and, you know, 20% of the world o world's oil flows through there. Uh, you know, if we, if we wanted to stay out of other people's fights, then we'd make it easier for people to uh, use uh, um, high pressure steam to extract oil here instead of harder. We would make it illegal. So you know, as long as we want to be involved in other people's messes, which I guess uh, supports the military industrial complex, then you know, we have an interest. But as a libertarian, we don't have an interest. Well, I, I mean, just, I, I, when you say these are very effective boats and they're very fast and hard to hit and all the rest of that, I, I, um, I'm not a big fan of, of you know, spending $10 billion on an aircraft carrier or anything, but 
I when I said what do we call them targets? Uh, really, the the U.S. military's competency in this area is 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 past frightening. I it mean, may it, be, uh, but we failed to win a war in Afghanistan after what 30, well, uh, 20 years now. You know, we failed to win a war in Iraq. We're failing to win a, a war in Libya and Syria. I'm not saying we <laughs> win, but what and, I'm saying is, and it's, we it, would very much fail to win a war in Iran because their terrain is a lot more difficult. Than Iran. Not than, if not than Afghanistan, but what 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 you're what, what you're talking about here is a shallow um, lake that at its narrowest is 30 miles wide. Mm -hmm. So when I say these things, sitting on top of it are targets. I'm I'm literally from a military, strategic and tactical standpoint, they are. I mean, if you're you're looking at Afghanistan, Afghanistan has these things called mountains, and inside them you have these things called caves and you have people who are used to that terrain and have been fighting in it for, um, I don't know, 10 generations. What you have is an American war machine with a, a, with a, a generational uh, history of being very effective <laughs> at sinking other people's targets. And, and True, so but they would only yeah. have to sink one or two U.S. targets in order to block the, the you know, since it's a shallow lake, as you put yeah. it, yeah. Well, to, block you know, the, to block the channel. There's also Make another. possible to ship water. Well, no, and, and, and I think it's it's stupid, but uh, the, you know, the Iranians, uh, yeah, Trump's stupid in this, uh, our State Department's stupid. Uh, the Iranians are scheduling this exercise way earlier than they normally do. For mm -hmm. what reason, I don't know. I would assume um, it's their, let's give them the same power we give the Russians. It's to affect the upcoming midterm elections so that uh, they can beat the drums and and uh, so there's something new. Well, I mean, far, far, be it, far be it from the deep state to lie. Well, they would never do anything like that, well, right? I mean, but, so but Iran has threatened to close that strait before. Yeah. Uh, Mad Dog Mattis, the U.S. Defense Secretary, mm -hmm. um, great nickname for him. <laughs> um, he's stated that in years past, on over several occasions, they've beaten those sorts of drums yeah. before. And well, I and I highly doubt any put, kind of. They've, they've put mines in it. They've <coughs> done all sorts of things. They've done some attacks by by uh, these speedboats and all the rest of that. Well, and I, I'm not saying they wouldn't sink an American ship or two. And uh, good and good men and women on both sides would die. Men and women on our side. Men on their side. Um, and uh, it'd be a bad thing. Well, but you know, militarily, it would be a, just a horrible mistake for I don't, Iran. I, well, I don't think little gunboats are, are going to be much of anything up against a supercarrier task force yeah. group. But I mean, you, you know, if, you, if, if you read the, you know, the, 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 the uh, um, deep state mouthpiece called, known as CNN politics, I mean, you just read Clinton these things and they just, <laughs> they, the, 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 the way it's written, you know, it's it's just it is inciting, and it's it, it probably isn't a problem, but they want to make it a problem. I mean, it's like, of you know, they'll say like, oh well, the U.S. sees no immediate signs of hostile intent from Iraq, but the show of force by the Revolutionary Guard has the U.S. military intelligence deeply concerned. You know, and then you know they give these reasons like this is timing's unusual. Well, they're just trying the to stir elections. up the pot. Timing's not unusual. Well, it's, it's, the it's, other, it's the just, other scare that people you know, keep coming out with is, you know, that Russia hacked the elections and uh, China is uh, infiltrating yes. a corrupt war and North Korea it is, is doing just, the same. And now yeah. we're hearing that uh, there was a ransomware attack on the borough of Matanuska Susitna. In Alaska, say that three times. And, fast. and they <laughs> shut down, <laughs> shut down the, the uh, shut down their 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 old uh, uh, I don't know old Mac or whatever they use for uh, for uh, uh, <laughs> records in, in that little borough. And so it would, they, be, they, they, it would be a PC. I'll give you I'll give you the off, juicy scoop. They've dusted Did off their typewriters and are now yeah. writing handwriting receipts for the property tax receipts. For, first of all, PCs dominate over ninety five percent of the global market. So I, I would. It, it would not be a Mac, ah, absolutely okay. not. What I can say, um, the attack spread on July 24th. They think it's been dormant in their system since May. Yeah. Uh, I'm assuming they have brilliant IT specialists working there <laughs> because it has compromised and, and, and bricked a lot of technology there. Uh, affected uh, 500 desktop computers, PCs, of course, over 120 computer servers, also the telephone system and the door entry system. <laughs> Nice. I'm not sure how oh. all of those things were linked well, together the, the or internet, why they the were. The Internet of Things, don't you know? IoT. Right, yeah. right, yeah. But it, it, uh, it's, it's incredible that 
they have had very little recourse to this sort of action. Um, they said that they've that they've completely lost uh, all email records, but they've received some data from shared drives. So that's good to know. Um, mm -hmm. I'm surprised that they had <laughs> they had the requisite space to store enough typewriters and analog devices <laughs> on site to be able to uh, pull them out in the in, in, at the well, right time. With a population of six. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Why do they have over 500 desktop computers there? Uh, that, well, we don't know. I mean, what is that? Is that serve? Is that like a dual maybe channel? Maybe some of them are, going tr are, are trash 80s. That's the word I was looking for Dear before. Trash 80s. Oh my God. But yeah, yeah, ransomware is very common these days. Yeah. It basically hijacks your data, uh, scrambles it, encrypts yeah. it, um, yeah. and then forces you to pay something. Yeah. And sometimes when you when you do pay those things, which is not advised, the, you, they still won't give you uh, control of the system. Uh, but it, those sorts of things are avoidable. One of those things uh, that's, that's kind of been a problem, e even in government circles, is uh, phishing attacks. Employees, especially government mm -hmm. workers, being trained to vet out and understand which links and which things in your email not to click. Mm -hmm. um, and millions of dollars of IT right. infrastructure can be compromised. <coughs> Should stop just using Windows by, first. <laughs> by, by making those sorts of yeah. poor click click time decisions. Yeah. Um, I, I would like to know, I would like to see the ledgers to see how they were able, this borough was able to afford such uh, high-end components that are now basically worthless. Mm. Well, sad story in Alaska. Well, you have to speaking justify of, your, speaking your budgets. Speaking of sad, sad tech stories, there's a, 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 well, a potentially sad tech story with uh, Tesla, the manufacturer of self-driving and uh, all electric and so forth cars. They reported a quarterly loss of seven hundred seventeen point five million dollars. Stock went up ten percent. What's what's you know? What, are we at the at the tail end of a more bubble here or what? More than ten percent. More than ten percent. As of earlier today, it's it's gone up over sixteen percent. Okay, well, what's going on here? Are we at the at the uh, euphoric stage? Are we at the nineteen ninety uh, at the two thousand level of the, the internet bubble in or the yeah. or the two thousand eight yeah. level of the of the real estate? Like, what, what's going on? Uh, part of the good news is that uh, uh, because of the surge and because of the, s the success of Elon Musk's vision, one could say, um, the, the uh, very sad short sellers in the Wall Street uh, were down $1.7 billion. For their, so it's uh, a short, short squeeze. Is that what's going they, on? They tried. They, they've been trying to do that to Tesla since, uh, since last year. Wow. So there was a lot of money lost. Uh, a company called S3 Partners LLC was tracking that information. Um, and I know, I know Elon Musk himself on, uh, on Twitter, which he's very prone to use platforms like Twitter, has um, sent some very sarcastic or funny comments uh, to people who are very notable short sellers in this space. The other day he sent something about, I'll send you a box of my short shorts. Mm -hmm. um, just really witty commentary. <laughs> However, there's also been another component. Uh, the the quarter, post quarter two conference call with investors Musk actually apologized for his behavior and, and what he said to the same folks uh, after the quarter one conference call. Uh, uh, that's the quarter one conference call. That's where he actually said, uh, I don't like your question. That's a boring question. I'm going to take a question mm -hmm. from some, uh, some uh, amateur investor on, on YouTube or something. There, yeah. there is certainly a cult of personality around Elon Musk. Uh, I have been subject to it myself at, at certain times in the last few years. Uh, but his apology seemed to push that s stock surge past 10%. Mm -hmm. There were stories all over the internet where the investors really pleased that he's turning his behavior around. Um, of granted, uh, he there are have been other less than savory statements made on Twitter. But the question remains: but Will they ever be able to manufacture enough cars to justify this really, really inflated stock price? Uh, it is overvalued. I mean, my, my gosh, uh, you know, they don't have anything that BMW they, or they G cut their workforce G by nine percent back even in June. GM does. I mean, they're all everybody's making electric Yet cars. Yet they've I mean, also they've also sort of kind of officially announced uh, what is it the Model Y uh, 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 SUV? It's a, it's not it's slightly different um, than the the uh, Tesla Model X, but they've announced that and they will be committing an entire factory to it somewhere in <laughs> California even though they haven't really ramped up the production enough to meet the Model 3 demand, mm -hmm. they haven't really sold any basic models. They've been prioritizing the ones with all the bells and whistles so that the profit margins are higher there. So that's, that, those are smart business decisions. But then again, there's also stories coming out about how people are refunding their deposits because they've been waiting for so long and they haven't received their product yet. Investors, if they are to be believed uh, uh, in this scenario, there is a, uh, a, a, 
a uh, incoming um, quarter of profitability, maybe Q3, maybe Q4, as they continue to ramp up production. Um, I'm optimistic. I don't want to see Tesla just implode, and I don't want to see any more of Elon Musk's uh, interesting uh, word choice t- on, uh, <coughs> on, on the Twitters. Yeah. Well, speaking of another uh, tech uh, company, well, really it's not a tech company so much as it is a mail order catalog company. I'm talking about Amazon, mm. uh, who sells uh, stuff on you, know, you order it on the internet and it's shipped by FedEx or the post office. Mm-hmm. And uh, Jeff Bezos and Donald Trump got into a bit of a well, uh, it was uh, it was pretty much a one-sided Twitter war on the beha- on behalf of uh, uh, Trump, saying that uh, that Amazon's not paying a high enough price for the for their postal shipping, when in fact it's the only profit center the post office has, my understanding. Third class mail. Uh, it's, yeah, third, uh, right. Uh, so anyway, they are now being actually threatened with real postal increases. Is this going to have an effect on, on Amazon, or are they just going to say, heck with you, post office will go UPS? Well, I mean, the, the you know, Trump, Trump totally, you know, just without evidence, he, he basically said, oh, we're losing, you know, the post office is losing money because of you guys. You know, and it's like, no. It wouldn't have anything to do with the fact that Jeff Bezos owns the Washington Post, would it? <laughs> it might. Uh, but uh, uh, so they're, they're trying to, you know, ha- Amazon is trying to uh, uh, lobby and uh, 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 kind of maybe put a stop to that. But uh, I don't know how that would affect things. I did know that they were talking about taking over the post office. I don't know if that's still a thing, but they had talked about that. I really wish they would. They, they, <laughs> they did create the coalition. Uh, I mean, what, what is the deadline for the, um, the report coming into to the White House? August 10th? So they're taking all public outreach uh, and lobbying steps right now to make it clear that they're going to do everything in their power, uh, Amazon and other logistical and shipping companies, to uh, what, either prop up USPS or find more profitable ways of operating it. Um, what needs to be said, though, is that the, the data being used to create comments like Trump's about the, the uh, severe loss of money in areas like shipping, um, as you were saying earlier, th- those are one of the few bright spots, right? So they're, what they're trying to do... And, and the post office loses Buku, big bucks on, on first-class mail sure. and makes it, it, makes it up on, on, sh- on Amazon shipping. Mm-hmm. Without yeah, but the, 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 the concern of these companies is that real market data is used and uh, not just assumptions about how things are, are actually working. So we'll see what happens before the August 10th deadline. Don't I'm optimistic. I can't imagine a world without Amazon's uh, wonderful me, me shipping neither. prices. Me neither. <laughs> I hope they can keep it up. Neither, neither can my wife. Thank you very much for being part of a Libertarian Counterpoint. See you again next week, same time, same place. www.accesssuckmoney.org, 8 p.m. Thursday. Noon Friday, 4 a.m. Saturday, cable channels all over the place, including Channel 17 in Sacramento, as well as Facebook and YouTube. Have a great week.